Hello and welcome to Newsroom Series. I'm Alumide McCauley. Thank you so much for joining us. Our focus today is the South-South region. However, we begin with top stories outside the South-South and goods worth millions of Naira were destroyed on Wednesday when an early morning fire raised some shops in the Namdia, Zikwe and Dosima section of the Idumota market in Lagos State. The fire affected three buildings, including two two-story structures, one three-story building, and the market popularly known for clothes, bags, and shoes. Now the fire began about 4, uh, 7.01 a.m. today. Further investigation conducted revealed that the immediate cause of the fire was due to power surge after electricity was restored. The Senate Ad Hoc Committee investigating the 30 trillion Naira Ways and Means advanced to the federal government and 1.1 trillion Naira Anchor Borrower Fund grilled officials of the Central Bank of Nigeria. The chairman of the committee, Senator Issa Jibrin, while speaking to journalists after they met with officials of the Apex Bank of the National Assembly in Abuja, said that the loans must be recovered in full. The Nigeria Customs Service has championed and authorized economic operators AEO program, which is expected to enhance efficiency and predictability of trade facilitation efforts in the country. The Controller General of the Nigeria Customs Service, Mr. Diwali Adini, who was speaking during a stakeholder meeting in Abuja, explained that the program will foster collaboration between the Customs Service, other government agencies, and experts to boost authorized economic operations programs. Now, the Minister of Solid Minerals Development, Mr. Dili Alake, is soliciting legislative support in order to entrench local value addition to the solid mineral sector in the country. He stated this during a visit by the House Committee on Solid Minerals, led by its chairman, Honorable Jonathan Beffrey, at his office in Abuja. And now to our main stories, the newsroom South-South region. One death has been recorded, another fatality injured uh, recorded as well during the protest of commercial motorcycle riders in Asaba and environs on Monday. Secretary to the Delta State Government, Kingsley Emu, confirmed this while inspecting the area and ruins from the violent protest and the fights which continue today. Monday, March 18th, commercial motorcycle riders in our Sabine environs take to the streets in anger protesting the alleged killing of their colleague during a law enforcement operation by the state task force team. Broken vehicle windscreens, damaged furniture, burnt tricycles and other items attest to the level of destruction that took place during the protest. Businesses around the popular midwifery market in Okpanam, as well as the Delta State Post Primary Education Board along Summit Road, were not spared. On Tuesday, the protest continued as traders and motorcycle riders clashed. The tense situation gets the attention of the Delta State Government and security agencies as the Secretary to the State Government and the Commission of Police inspect the ruins from the scene of the protest. Thereafter, they move to the Asaba Specialist Hospital, where one person is admitted and treated for gunshot wounds. We decided to pay a visit to the hospital here to also come and see the individual that was injured in that clash yesterday. Some will tell you that it was a very peaceful protest, but let me quickly add. My Inspector General of Police, IGP Kaudai, we concerned. Peaceful protest is a right of everybody, but violent protest is a crime. When you decide to protest and you come out with arms, cordials, and you call it peaceful, when you decide to vandalize, to loot, to destroy, and you call it peaceful, I don't know what the definition of peaceful is. 
security issues are not issues that are discussed on the pages of newspapers or on television. But the security agencies have been working assiduously to make sure that Asaba retains its calmness and peacefulness. And reassuring all well-meaning citizens that we shall continue to protect lives and properties in the states. And we see this opportunity to call all landlords to please know your tenants, irrespective of where they come from. It is not targeted at anybody, but if you have a tenant who is disruptive, we will hold you accountable. For now, the violence has been brought under control and the people are advised to go about their activities without fear as government reiterates its resolve to continue with the enforcement of the regulation of tricycles and motorcycles in the state. Supporters of Governor Similai Fubara in Obiakwa, local government area of River State, have cautioned the State House of Assembly led by their son against causing a breach of peace in the state. The State Assembly was recently reported to have begun a process to amend the local government law to empower the House to extend the tenure of elected council chairman beyond June this year in case the state government fails to conduct an election. The Fubara supporters at a stakeholders meeting said, beyond the perceived frivolity of the action, the assembly members have lost the legitimacy to sit, having defected from the PDP to the APC. They also tackled the state APC caretaker chairman for criticism of the Fubara administration, amongst other issues. Supporters of the River State Governor Siminilai of Fubara have, since the recent political crisis in the state, sustained a steady campaign to expand their support base and call to question actions that are perceived to be detrimental to his administration. This stakeholders meeting by the governor's supporters in Obiakwa local government area is one of such ceremonies. They are challenging certain decisions by the State House of Assembly, including last week's amendment of the local government laws to allow the House extend the tenure of elected chairmen and councillors beyond three years, where it becomes impossible to conduct local government elections. Our attention has been drawn to the purported city of the former Assembly members, led by Right Honorable Martins Chiki Amewuli, who have been sitting severally trying to incite and cause confusion and liberty to distract the government of Sassimila Ifubara. Oh, my people are saying, one, we call on Honorable Martin Samuel to please help for stop because he is no longer representing the people of Obia Boa, the Constitution is one. And I want to take it lightly with him again. And those laws who they are, they are, the, those laws, the assembly is non and void. They also seized the opportunity to defend Governor Fubara against criticism by the All Progressives Congress APC in the state, led by another indigenous of the LGA, Mr. Tony Okocha. And I want to state and call on the chairman of APC in River State, Chief Tony Okocha, as the leadership of Obi Awa gathered today. We have my call on him to help force disease from abusing the governor of River State. I will challenge Tony Okota to tell us what he brought to Obi Awami when he was chief of staff for a good four years under the administration of His Excellency Right Honorable Chibi Gerutmi Amechi. What we saw was urgent poverty. In attendance are chiefs, men, women, including the former councillor representing the ward of the FCT minister in Yeson Wike, who recently resigned to support Governor Fubara and was expelled from the PDP. What is my scene? My thing is that we should declare support for Sinai Ebora. That is the thing I committed before all, all became against me. And I have no regret to it. Expect more to come. There has been that law against my person. I don't regret my action. We are here to pledge our support for a performing governor. Nobody can mislead people people again. You cannot trade our happiness for your own personal interest. It will happen again. No. It will happen again. No. We are here as Obiapo people, the good people of Obiapo. The people that when you call them, they will answer you. When we agreed that we are putting our governor similarly, we did it and we did it perfectly. These stakeholders believe it is only right for the people of Obiakwa to support another tribe to govern the state successfully. 
having received the support of other ethnic groups for their son. Yes, on Wiki to rule for eight years after the tenure of Rotimi and Meiji, who are both of Ikwere ethnic group. The Niger Delta Development Commission has reiterated its appeal to the federal government to review the status of the commission on the Treasury Single Account TSA. The interventionist agency noted that such a move will make financial inflow into the commission, especially statutory allocation, flexible, thereby ending the issue of abandoned projects and accelerating development in the oil-rich Niger Delta region. The River State representative on the NDDC Governing Board, Tony Okocha, stated this during a meeting with contractors handling projects in River State. Gathered here at the River State Office of the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC in Port Akert, are directors, staff, and contractors handling projects for the interventionist agency in the state. The meeting, which is at the behest of the state representative on the NDDC governing board, is part of efforts to see to the completion of abandoned and stalled projects in River State. We're not here to read the riot acts. I'm here to understand what your plights are. On the hear from you what it is. I like to hear your complaints. I want to share my visions with you. At the end of the day, you'll be happy that this is in hell. The contractors expressed appreciation to the Commission for availing them the opportunity to be part of the development process in the Niger Delta. They, however, ventilate their thoughts on some issues which, according to them, require the Commission's urgent attention. We have tried when did this. They should be tried for contractors. And sometimes when contractors go to the office, they push them as if they are coming to stay. They are looking for their money. They should give them and help them to do the work, some of the works, the projects that are abandoned or stopped. It's lack of fun. Some of these jobs today, some of us took our dollar reserve, whom we got from other source, and changed it and did work in NDDC. If we left that money and sell it today, let's have a conscience. We should know our profit margin. While sympathizing with the contractors over the delay in the payment for jobs done, the NDDC state representative appeals to them to return to site, assuring them also that he is making an urgent case for the release of funds to offset the debts owed them. He further restates the appeal to the federal government to remove the commission from the Treasury single account for accelerated development in the region. If NDDC, like some agencies and some um, 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 organs of government, rather, are taking, is taking away from TSA, then we'll be able to make negotiations, get monies in bulk, and see how we will rework the procurement law to make sure that monies are handy for contractors to go to the field and deliver. Otherwise, we'll be having a problem of variation, uh, uh, uncompleted projects, and all that. We know that TSA is, a, is a, uh, one of the challenges running NDDC. If the board now has uh, this in the, to them to go on their own, to fund and to search for fund, it will be easier. Like what is now saying that 70% could have given to contractors to do their work. And the contractor, they give 70%. What is he doing? He has to go to the site and finish the work in two months or one month when he has the cash. As the board and management of the NDDC continues with their appeal for a review of the commission's status on the Treasury single account, it is clear that the executives of the interventionist agency will require a more intense advocacy to convince the federal government to accede to this request. Welcome back. The era of interagency rivalry and conflict among sister security agencies may become a thing of the past. That's according to Commodore Gideon Kachim, the commandant of the Nigerian Navy Basic Training School in River State. The commandant made this known during an interagency lecture at the Navy's training facility while playing host to other officials from different sister security agencies at the opening day of the lecture series.
It's the first day of a week-long lecture series at the Nigerian Navy Basic Training School in One River State, involving multiple security agencies who are being educated on the importance of interagency collaboration. One of the resource persons from the Army explains the importance of communication across different command structures. The development of a joint interagency training curriculum for youth in the armed forces of Nigeria and relevant security agency training institutions will mitigate the challenges of inadequate joint training. The joint interagency training curriculum will accommodate the training of selected personnel of the relevant agencies at strategic, operational, tactical level and enhance collaborative approach to armed military for enhanced national security. The commander of the 6th Division Garrison explains that while at the upper levels there isn't much of a problem, the foot soldiers are the primary target of the lectures. This seminar on its own is a step in the right direction. You find out that most times we have challenges at the lower level, where the lower personnel are operating. Maybe we can attribute that to maybe lack of no, uh, understanding or ignorance, and that is why the seminars like this are organized. And I believe if it cascades down to the lower level, it will go a very long way to solve this challenge of intelligence. We don't have challenges, we don't have problems, it's just misunderstanding. Because each of the services, whether the military or the paramilitary services, are unique in their own ways. Meanwhile, the commandants of the training school says different security agencies will have different days during which they will present their lectures for the benefit of the trainees and the security architecture. It's a series of lectures that we've um, carefully picked out agencies that um, in the course of our duties we normally relate with and carry out joint operations with or are part of uh, joint tax forces. That way, uh, when they bring their perspective on board and share it with the trainees, the trainees will be better exposed and have a better level of understanding on how to relate when they eventually meet on the field or in the course of carrying out these operations. So it's a week-long activity uh, with um, resource persons coming from various uh, agencies and sister services and other security agencies. Several agencies attended the event, including members of the Nigeria Customs Service, Nigeria Immigration Service, Department of State Security, and the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. Charles Operum, Channels Television News. As part of his campaign to build a network of economically significant roads across the three senatorial districts of Akwaibom, Governor Umar Eno has flagged off the construction of 8.6 kilometer ADNA and Abak Ikot Road linking Abak and Uyo local government areas. Also flagged off was the 7.9 kilometer dual carriage ring road, three extension to link three local government areas of Uyo, Ikono, and Ibiono, Ibom to the existing ring road three, as he announced state government's readiness to commence enrollment into the Skills Acquisition Center in the state. The flag off of several road projects in different local government areas of Akwaibom State is a reaffirmation of their economic importance. One of them is a 7.9 km dual carriage ring road 3 extension to link Uyo, Ikono, and Ibiano Ibom local government areas to the existing ring road 3 and create access to other major investments, including the low cost housing estate. Dakada Skills Acquisition Center and various farming communities. For me, it is a business road and it will open up those, these communities. Three local governments all at one go. This is the kind of uh, road we want to construct because Akwaibom will remain one of the best, I will remain one of the states that has the best road network in this country. Commissioner for Works and Fire Service, Professor Eno Ibanga, gives further explanations on the scope of the project. The width of this road is 32.1 meters. It links the other ring road into this area, and each of the carriageway we have 7.3 meters each, with 2.75 shoulder at each side and 2 meter walkway as we go. And in this road, we have drains throughout the whole length of the road. 
Another road project is the 8.6 kilometer Ediyanga Abak Ikot Ekan Road, linking Abang, Etinang, and Uyo local government areas. It's designed with an outfall drain at the lowest point to ensure quick evacuation of water. This road is going to have two layers. The first 60 mm asphaltic wearing a binding course and 14 mm asphaltic wearing course. And at the end, because of the nature of the water we are expecting on this road, we are going to have at least artificial ponds in about five locations along the road so that we can take away the flooding since we are not doing any outfall drain. Because outfall drain you have to take to away, uh, you have to get away to take the water. These major projects are projected to ease the flow of vehicular traffic between Abak, Uyo and Etinang and allow faster response of essential service providers. It will also make it easier for pupils of St. Patrick's School to access their school during the rainy season. Residents of some streets in Calabar South local government area of Cross River State have sent a Save Our Souls message to Governor Basi Otu following the deplorable state of their roads, especially as the rains begin. Speaking at various streets in the capital, they explained that the poor road conditions have not only caused damage to their vehicles, but also pose a threat to their safety. They hope the government listens to their plea as they might be completely cut off if the rain begins. In the heart of Calabar, the Cross River State capital is one of the most popular local government areas, Calabar South. Calabar South boasts of beautiful building plans, but there's one major problem, lack of good access roads, which causes bigger problems during heavy rains. Residents fear they'll soon be completely cut off from major cities in the state. They send a Save Our Soul message to the governor, urging him to take immediate action. If you look at the downside there, you see that there's a big gutter there. There's a, when the rain is falling, you see that there's the water flowing over the street there. It affected the children, the children that they are going to school. It affected the vehicle over there. In fact, it flowed to some people's compounds over there. So it has been a lot of problems to us in the street. With the coming rains, I would like them, I would appeal to the government to please do something about the road. You know, when it's, the rains become very, very heavy, it's very, very difficult for us to get to our destinations through the rain and with the bad roads. Even some vehicles used to really break down, down, down here on the roads. Others highlight the potential social and economic impact of repairing the roads. If the government could help us just start the road, it's a short road, it could be tarred and then uh, lights given and the whole thing. We'll, we'll, we'll be very happy. Once the problem of street network is tackled, which is which the only way to solve it is by tiring it and making it more terrible as good as and you know up to standard and good drainages. Once this problem is tackled, I think it will give Calabar a new face. Governor Basio too visits the area to inspect various projects, the percentage of completion and what's yet to be done. Uh, for the ones we've uh, so far inspected, the level of work is uh, it's going well and the quality of work, uh, I want to say, is excellent. Uh, just that for this particular site, I think uh, that's a problem here uh, because of the location. And uh, this place was a culvert before, it didn't work. So we want to replace it with a proper bridge so that uh, we can have a thoroughfare on the ground where water and other things uh, can pass freely. He takes a tour around the State Library, the Watts Market, and other renovation works both in Calabar Municipality and Calabar South local government areas. The clan head of one of the streets assured the state's government of collaboration from residents to the projects to completion stage. They should all rally around and make sure say they don't touch this prop this government uh, materials. I've been using tank wire. Please, if you touch the government materials, they will leave us and go other areas. Don't touch their materials. Leave their materials for them to work with. Don't ask them for any money. Don't look for anything from them. Residents are eagerly awaiting the governor's follow through and has promised to improve the road conditions and ensure their safety and well-being as the rains become heavier.
The Bielsa State Police Command has assured residents that the corridors of the state are being well monitored, hence there will be no fall, no issues rather, of violence in Bielsa from the attack of the fallout from the attack on military officers that took place in Delta State. Delta State shares a lot of land and watery boundaries with Bielsa, hence the police is not ruling out the possibility of criminals from Delta State making an attempt to escape through Bielsa. Explaining efforts that the Bielsa command is making to maintain peace, the police commissioner gave a real-time demonstration of how they monitor all angles of the state using technology. If we had known that some people would shelter these uh, hoodlums that uh, did our army wickedness, would have been able to deploy the drones earlier. But right now, our corridors are well governed. The drones and other assets are working hand in hand to ensure that we have something to support the army in their ongoing um, countermeasures and drills to decontaminate the place of any of such occurrences tomorrow. Corridors between Delta and uh, uh, Bias are now. Be rest assured that Bias is enveloping out of the crisis in Delta. We've been able to do that. Do that. We have the architecture, we have the framework, and we have the will. Our newsroom series today. Thanks for watching. I'm Ruben David.